thanks for joining us all the way from Glasgow. Uh, and it's very early in the morning, sorry to have woken you up, got you out of bed. Um, but you must be feeling pretty good about the way things are going, having gotten there and having gotten your player there. Tell us a little bit about how the process, how it went down, yeah? To be honest, Motherwell being in the Scottish Premier League was quite interesting right from the beginning because when you heard of a top league, uh, a top division team coming and approaching us for so joining the World Cup, that they have shown interest in the division. I was pretty excited myself that uh, like at least a club somewhere in the top division, somewhere in the world is showing interest. Since then, there have been a lot of other clubs have been putting in inquiries, but this was the first proper firm offer, you know, to uh, invite him on a trial because we're actually looking at a serious contract for like two or three years. And since then, it's been a long process getting the visa, like looking at other club options. But since this was the first one that came through, we're quite happy that we took it and uh, mm -hmm. finally got here three days back. I think he has only trained for three days so far, and they were pretty happy with him so far. And uh, I think they're taking him in the away match today. As part of the like traveling sport, obviously can't be registered, but part of the team. I mean, not too many agents have successfully managed to take Indian players out. Um, what are the sort of hurdles that you face in terms of dealing with clubs, in terms of the regulations? What what, what is the kind of challenges that get in the way? Uh, firstly, of course, it's the bigger clubs will never take Indian players too seriously because they have such a huge talent pool of players. They've got like players from the top 50 countries the best players in the world coming into the top four or five leagues. So, suddenly if you have a player from a 100th ranked country uh, trying to knock on the door for top five or six league, it's, it's almost impossible, it's not going to happen. But that's why we have dropped a bit down in the standard of the league in terms of ranking. But uh, that's the first hurdle. The second hurdle obviously is work permits in most countries. It's different for different countries, different rules. But uh, for UK it's quite challenging. We are hoping to get some kind of special exemption for UK. But uh, in some countries, the ranking, in some countries, the minimum wages, which they don't want to pay an Indian player, which they'd rather pay to a very uh, high-level player. So, that's a, that's a big hurdle. So, it's basically the, the seriousness of the big clubs taking Indian players and uh, obviously the work permit and employment-related issues. On the flip side, um, there is the sort of value of uh, attracting the Indian market to, to your club by having an Indian player on board. Does that come into, does that play a role in, in your conversations? Uh, not that much. I think the first thing is they'll always want a player to be of the level quality. of quality. Yeah. And if they match that, then that's an additional, obviously an additional avenue for them to sell jerseys and make merchandise and stuff like that. But like you've seen Korean players, Japanese players come into all the top leagues in the world. But they've obviously reached a level where they're good enough to play in Manchester United and Premier League clubs. And then after that, obviously, they might give a slight preference because it will boost their jersey sales. But if you're not of the standard, then they're never going to look at you seriously, at least staying here. Is there a definite focus sort of on, on looking at clubs in England or are you also looking elsewhere in Europe? Elsewhere in Europe also. Uh, a few clubs in Germany did inquire, but the clubs themselves are not very clear about uh, the employment rules, especially for minors and their academies and how many players they can take in. The smaller clubs don't really get that many. Uh, players from smaller countries. It's the bigger clubs who are well equipped to handle that, but they're obviously not so keen on uh, a player from a hundred rank country right now. But the smaller clubs are not very equipped in terms of employment laws and regulations and stuff like that. So uh, they're, they're trying to figure out the rules themselves and then get back to us. So I'd say Germany and Spain to an extent. Again, Spain's got a problem with the number of non EU players, they can only have three in the squad. So that's also becoming a big issue. Like, that covers the youth team as well, is it? Uh, the youth team, I think, I think is zero. I don't think you're allowed any non-EU players to oh, play yeah, in the youth. Oh yeah, because you have to be a certain age to get that international transfer and things. You have to be over 18 to get an international transfer anyway. Right. So you could play in a youth team with a uh, with an unregistered sport, playing friendly matches, but you couldn't play the registered youth league yeah, of the, the league. So, uh, so t if you can, to whatever extent you can, can you share the details of this current low? Uh, trial with Motherwell? Yeah, so the current trial is basically uh, it's going to be for at least three weeks to a month but they're going to give evaluation every week because uh, I think they play him in a friendly every week so every time he plays one friendly they give some kind of feedback so we couldn't get news any, any time between the first week and the fourth week uh, training with the first team which is four goalkeepers I think so it's the full first team squad training together so he's in the 25-man squad with the first team uh, 
for the seniors. So it's not it's not the under 18s, around the under 20s. It's straight to the senior team. I think he's the youngest goalkeeper in the senior squad training with them. But not the youngest player training with the first team. Are they? I think he's the youngest in the in the whole squad. In the whole squad. Yeah, he's the youngest in the whole squad. There would be a couple of like 18, 19 years. I don't think there's anyone 17 in the squad. So uh, yeah, he's the youngest player in the whole squad, and uh, it's just once a week, once a day training, and he's into into the club for four or five hours every day because. It's like a proper environment where you come in, have your breakfast, go through a team talk, have a training session, come back, um, have your lunch, do a gym session, and then it's like five, six hours just spent at the club. It's like a full time professional club. And is he getting some sort of a stipend to take care of his expenses during this time, or is it all self funded? Because it's not, it's not allowed by law. Oh, yeah, it's not allowed. Oh, yeah. is not allowed to pay anything. Obviously, they can like they can pick him up and drop him from practice. They can give him food, but they can't uh, they can't pay him anything. I think starting with Dheeraj first. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I think this one month is important. He's probably might stay back for two or three months, depending on which other clubs show interest and stuff like that. There's not no contract going to come out of it this year. There might be an offer for next year or the year after next. So the target is like in two years' time or at least three years' time to be playing at this level of a league, and then spread from there. Uh, I think in terms of there's certain positions that clubs out here look for. So, uh, if they're happy with him, there's obviously a bit of media publicity here also around it, and other clubs have started taking interest that they are good Indian players as well. So I think it will open up a chance for at least a few more to come over, at least one tries, and then it depends on how they really do out there. Work out, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's tough because it's cold, it's rainy, it's uh, different conditions. They don't, it's not like playing in India and stuff like that. And then obviously, this players have traveled around the world a lot, but. Uh, like living on your own and giving a try on your own is different than traveling with a, team a bunch, and, yeah. bunch of five friends and a manager looking after you. It's, it's quite quite challenging. So I think like if he does well, if you know in a week or two, then uh, hopefully more players could come over as well. 